Welcome to lecture three of Ken Wheeler's take on magnetism. Up to now, he has just been doing a preamble with a lot of word salad and silly nonsense. But in lecture three, he promises to get into important concepts like lines of force. Let's see how that will go for him. Okay, let's uh, go on to uh, part three of the lecture on magnetism, and this is on lines of force. The diagram on the left, I'll have a god of uh, respect for uh, Charles Brody Steinmetz, is incorrect. There are no straight lines in Mother Nature's universe. This is the electric field conductor. The uh, dotted lines that are uh, radial to the center conductor are meant to be dielectric lines, and of course the circular are meant to be magnetic. On the left we have an image that's incorrect. On the right we have a correct image. Everything in Mother Nature is curved linear. Um, no. But everything in nature is curved linear. Of course, we've been using this uh, terminology since uh, Faraday, who made an observation and everything that we actually understand about magnetism, most everything, is essentially based upon uh, defective human observation and sensory experiences. But No, our understanding of magnetism is not based on things like careful measurements, a rigorous theoretical framework, one which we can and do test on a daily basis. No, surely testing our understanding of magnetism is not something that anyone does, right? Oh no, it literally is my job description. These are the uh, hypertrochoidal, or you can say spirograph-like patterns of the interlacing magnetodielectric. First, let's take a look at uh, the image on the right here. This is the image that you actually see underneath the supercell. Now, you can actually see a, a clockwise spiral of light and a counterclockwise spiral. Now, only thing we're actually seeing is a superimposition of one side of the pole uh, uh, superimposed upon the other side. So, I can tell by the brighter lines here that we're actually... Uh, looking at the, uh, pole clo the pole closest to the uh, lens or camera as the counterclockwise spiral. So we can just ignore the other side. Everywhere you see light, and by the way, ferrofluid is a nanoparticle uh, iron, uh, which is ultrasonically agitated um, to combine with oleic acid. It makes a really interesting pattern. And of course, the oleic acid is dielectric. It is the case like transformer oil is a dielectric medium. But uh, the uh, magnetic... Uh, lines that we have here, and we'll explain lines of force here really shortly in this third section of the lecture. Everywhere you see light here is the magnetic. Everywhere you see the absence of light is the dielectric. This is a constructive and destructive interplay between the magnetodielectric conjugate. Okay, I am not 100% sure what is happening inside the ferrocell. Google it and you will just get a lot of electric universe nonsense and a lot of pictures made by, well, this arsehole. But I do intend to build one and I'll experiment with it a bit. But from this image, we get some interesting clues. A ferrocell is just a device where there are two pieces of glass separated by a small distance. Inside, there is a ferrofluid and a light is shown through it. When you place a magnet on it, the particles in the ferrofluid align to the field and then create a diffraction grating, diffracting the light in interesting ways. It creates cool patterns like the one on his screen. However, these are not visualizations of the magnetic field, and this is kind of evident in this video. You see the pattern changing as he moves the device around, and this is because of the angle which you view the pattern from changes. If the device showed the actual magnetic field, then this wouldn't happen. Um, the actual uh, ferrofluid and the oleic acid uh, surfactant, which makes up um, ferrofluid, combine to make this image. So on the left we have the incorrect. It's mostly correct, but no straight lines in Mother Nature. So let's get on to explaining uh, the lines in Mother Nature, the so-called lines of force, which is really an absurd premise and a misunderstanding that dates back to Faraday. While I have a lot of respect for Faraday, this is just you know, a sensory observation, but it's incorrect to say what's actually going on. There are no magnetic lines of force. These are not lines, so-called lines of force pretending to the magnetism is a gross perceptually based error and absurdity. It has absolutely no basis in reality whatsoever. Said lines are only the peaks and troughs of the conjugate magnetodielectric system, which are mutually both manifest and anti-manifest as they interplay against each other towards both space and counter space. These are merely the simplex constructive and destructive interference patterns. The lines of force, if you will, is a nonsense concept that came from Faraday in viewing iron filings above a magnet. The lines are uh, due to constructive and destructive pressure mediation between the divergence and convergence of the magnetodielectric system. 
this uh, reintegrating dielectric and the uh, centrifugal divergent magnetic, of course, we have constructive and destructive interference. And I'll give you other examples you're extremely familiar with, and you should have an aha moment here shortly. There are no lines, of course, and, and uh, the force involved is solely that of magnetism. When we speak of force and creating space and magnetism, this is all quantitatively one and the same thing in reference to magnetism. The presumed lines of force are ether-wake fronts, both two-dimensionally circular and extrapolatively curved linear. To the mass, these endless wake fronts are the genesis of magnitude, which begins the measure of same, so conceptualized as uh, time. Wow, that was a lot of nonsense, but he is right in saying that there is no such thing as a line of force. A line of force is merely an abstract concept. Now, considering that he gave this 15-minute video the title Lines of Force, I hope that he actually describes what a line of force actually is according to him. But that's unlikely, so I'll describe what a line of force is in roughly 15 seconds. A line of force is an imaginary line which represents the direction of a magnetic field. At any point of the line, the direction of the magnetic field is tangent to the line. Here is a picture I drew. There you go. That is all it is. But let's move on. Take a look at this one. I wonder, I wonder where we have seen this on the left before. This hypertrochoidal pattern of the ancient Indian archetype, and who knows before them. The dream catcher. Jeez. For some reason, I don't know if it's just me, but I see some sort of similarity between, you know, this uh, geometric pattern on the left and the one on the right. Here we have the fundamental nature of the entire cosmos. And on the left we have this Indian archetype of the dream catcher. Literally, this pattern on the right is the pattern of the entire universe. Yes, pretty patterns. Yay! And they're not relevant. He is talking about a hypertrochoid here. Now, you can't see his screen very well, maybe because this expert in photography hasn't figured out how to do basic video editing. But for your benefit, I will draw a hypertrochoid for you. A hypertrochoid is a cool thing where you have one small circle rolling around another circle and a point attached to the first circle traces out a shape to create pleasing patterns. Now what does this have to do with magnetism? Well, nothing. These are the uh, constructive and destructive conjugate magnetodielectric, which is the absolute foundation for everything in, everything in the universe from macro to micro. So interesting we find this in an ancient Indian archetype, huh? Sure, it's absolutely coincidental. <laughs> That's a little bit of sarcasm there. Coincidental? Well, no, then these are just due to symmetries present in the system on the right. Symmetry is nice. Symmetry is pleasing. And that is why a lot of cultural artifacts and art have symmetry. Constructive and destructive phase due to spatial variance or displacement depending on the subject observed, be it light or the magnetodielectric interlacing of a palpable magnetic field of a magnet or the source of these presumed lines of force and absence thereof. The absence of light or assumed magnetism is destructive or rather lost and self-canceling in the dielectric which terminates in counter space. Both Tesla and Dollar have pointed out to you electrical field phenomena and observations where massive power has vanished completely from our universe without any transference, change, or exchange. This old paradigm that we've lived with for so long and everybody's repeated so often that energy is never created or destroyed, it's only transferred. Well, it's BS. Energy has been witnessed by countless, especially electrical engineers, vanished completely from our universe into counter space with no transference, no exchange whatsoever. I mean, literally, poof, massive amount of... Actually, ask anybody that's worked on transformer stations or hardcore electrical engineers that have been uh, built electrical power grids about this, they'll say, yep, that's, that's the case. And massive amounts of power vanished, and this electrical phenomenon is not understood. Well, it's not understood by them, but it's actually understood by a small group of people. So this notion that uh, energy is never created or destroyed, only transferred. Now, I know that there are a lot of electrical engineers in my audience, so I'm going to ask them. Have you ever witnessed energy being destroyed? There's a, uh, I'll show you the other image here. Here we go, take a look at uh, both of those. We'll talk about this in just a second. Um, interference observed in the double slit experiment, for example, is the exact same thing seen underneath the supercell and the same misinterpretation made by Faraday. However, contrary to mathematicians, there are no waves of light since a wave is not a thing, nor is light a damn particle. You keep saying that, but there's a huge amount of evidence against it. Yet you rail against quantum mechanics for not being backed by evidence, even though it is purely a phenomenological framework. But yeah, may I add that at no point during your lecture so far have you presented any evidence for your claims. And I have a sneaky suspicion 
that you will not be presenting any evidence at all in the remainder of this series. Over here, I actually have uh, sugar water solution. It's my own idea. And over here to the right, we have isopropyl alcohol. We have ferrofluid and a test tube. What you can't see is beneath it, we have this monster magnet. Everywhere you see a black spike, i.e. the ferrofluid, is the magnetic. These counter spikes, or these valleys, of course, the dielectric, these are the same lines of force we see here as we actually see underneath the uh, supercell um, right here. There's no difference. It's just a different uh, display medium. Uh, in this case, ferrofluid instead of a test tube with another... Uh, uh, agent uh, to let them uh, interact, in this case sugar water or rubbing alcohol. Well, no, these are not the same. Firstly, the spikes you see here are in the direction of the magnetic field, whereas the lines in your supercell are not. This is a double slit experiment, which of course can be performed another way, and we talk about that currently in a second. Light is not merely one thing, that being light, nor is the abextra field around a magnet merely one thing, that being magnetism. The insanity of the currently unevolved understanding of the nature of cosmic mechanics by atomistic scientists who are neck deep in their particle fantasy fantasies is they are completely unaware that all field modalities are conjugate constructs and waveform dual propagation phenomena. One can no sooner isolate magnetism from a magnet than one could isolate the dielectric from light, or for that matter, dielectricity from uh, electricity. Such insane postulations is akin to assuming, assuming you could separate out wetness from water or illumination from light. In this experiment, the dual double slit experiment, you don't actually need a double slit to perform the experimental output of the interference pattern. You only need a single needle, and I don't mean the eye of a needle, and I've made videos on that fact where you can actually shine a, a laser at the shaft of a needle. And what that will do is it'll sped up, set up a, a spatial phase, and then you'll actually have uh, the light being out of phase with itself as it actually curves around the needle, and then you'll have, of course, interlacing constructive and destructive interference. You don't need this double slit experiment. This, this old, old uh, riddle of uh, physics which is trying to explain fields, and fields are not physical. Hold on. Fields are not physical. So, the dielectric field, whatever that is, is not physical. The magnetic field is, what, well, not physical. You claim that you are an expert in field theory, yet you claim that fields are not physical, as in, they're not a thing. Or, do you not understand what the word physical means in the context of physics? is an absurdity. It's a misunderstanding of the nature of light, which is a coaxial circuit. Longitudinal uh, pulse perturbation, dielectric, and transverse electrical magnetic it makes up a complete coaxial circuit. Light is not a particle, and a wave is not a thing. People say, what well, is a wave-particle duality? Well, light is not a particle, and a wave is not a thing. So I always laugh my ass off enormously every time I hear someone say wave-particle duality. A wave is not a thing. Hmm, time for a quick rewind. Phase. And then you actually have uh, the light being out of phase with itself. As it actually curves around the needle, and then you have, of course, interlacing. In constructive and destructive interference. The mere fact that you are talking about light in these terms, however poorly you're using them, demonstrates that light has a wave-like nature. But earlier, you mentioned Young's double slit experiment. Are you aware that the modifications upon this experiment have demonstrated the whole wave-particle duality thing without a shadow of a doubt, even with molecules as large as 10,000 atomic mass units? This, of course, uh, is unevolved and unintelligent and anti-intellectual insanity by a particle atomists who make up the what I call the cult of quantum. These people are unintelligent in the extreme. This is the reason Nikola Tesla said that you can think deeply and yet still be quite insane. Yes, maybe you should spend some time considering that quote. Maybe then you will realize the irony. There cannot be any magnetic lines of force, since magnetism is only the dielectric field in an expression modality, which is the loss of energy or inertia. Where there is one, there is, of course, always the other. This, of course, is what Faraday observed when he came up with the idea of lines of force. These are iron filings scattered on a piece of paper above a bar magnet. Um, action at a distance, whether instantaneous or not, is irrelevant, and both are incorrect. Both of these presume that bodies are acting upon each other from the locus of the objects themselves, when in fact the medium of both objects is itself acting mutually between the two in interactions. And only this premise can accurately define and explain all observed phenomena, such as light speeding back up after it leaves a medium. The easiest way to stump a physicist is ask him, since uh, depending on the type of glass material or medium, light usually speeds down about 
course, light is not actually traveling. It's a rate of induction, but that's the point for another lecture and another understanding of light. Qu quickest way to stump a physicist is to ask him how light speeds back up after it leaves glass since it slows down by about 33% as it enters glass. And, of course, without breaking the law of conservation, they have no answer whatsoever. That's the really easiest way to stump them. They'll say, well, light springs off the glass or it speeds back up. Now you're breaking the law of conservation of energy, and how the hell is it springing off the glass? Uh, these absurdities and insanities of light traveling or being a particle or a wave can't be enjoined, nor they are, uh, nor are they accurate descriptions of the nature of light. Mm, okay, two points here. Firstly, the energy of a photon is not related to its speed. Secondly, I distinctly recall you saying that the conservation of energy is not a thing. This old paradigm that we've lived with for so long and everybody's repeated so often that energy is never created or destroyed, it's only transferred. Well, it's BS. So you misunderstood two concepts and your misunderstanding of one of these concepts is actually compatible with your misunderstanding of the other. But you haven't understood these misunderstandings well enough to understand this. so-called lines of force, things traveling, really? Is it traveling or is it the medium itself that is a perturbation? That's, there's only one way to accurately describe light, and you can't you do it with uh, messenger particles and particles and uh, uh, wave fronts. Wave is not a thing. This is a really hard principle. Physicists love to talk about waves. Waves of energy. Energy of what? Wave is not a thing. Since all is within the medium, every even saying two objects is absurd. Separation as pertains a field theory is an insane concept with no connection to reality or of nature. Magnets do not have nor emit from themselves a magnetic field. This is a property of the medium itself acting according to the field pressure mediated by the magnet and its interlacing magnetodielectric incommensurable point source condition and the field geometries observed and measured. Point source field incommensurability is an extremely important concept and important understanding of the nature of field phenomena. So, this is a very important concept, yet you make no effort to explain it. Is it maybe because it is nonsense? And this principle is wholly without comprehension in the currently unevolved understanding of nature. I'll discuss that shortly here in the next section. So, but remember, importantly, everywhere you see light here on the uh, image on the right, and this one's from Brian Kerr, is uh, the magnetic. This is where we have a clumping of the, uh, of the vitreous, i.e. the ferrofluid, are nanoparticles of iron suspended in, uh, well, actually uh, conjoined through ultrasonic vibration and they're molecular joined, mole molecularly joined with oleic acid. Um, I got tired of people telling me, for example, and I made a video about it, I thought it would be really popular, but it wasn't, that uh, blood is not magnetic. Well, you actually have your own type of ferrofluid in your blood because the, blood, the iron in your blood, most of it is nanoparticle and uh, its uh, surfactant is plasma. And so I actually cut myself once and made a, a supercell using my own blood, and it works perfectly. Now, I've done some pretty stupid things in the name of science, but that is just in bad taste, mate. Maybe you should see a mental health professional. Um, let's go on to uh, section four. And then in uh, section four, we'll have five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, section four is uh, defining what a magnet is. And if you like these videos, please click the link below because uh, my lecture is free. Any sort of donation, a buck or two greatly helps because... Uh, I live, uh, I live tight, believe it or not, and uh, anything helps, or if you uh, learn something, then uh, that itself is its own reward, because I like information, uh, accurate information, but I like information to get out there, so I hope you're enjoying yourself so far, that's, that's the end of section three of my lecture, and then we'll go on to uh, section four on what a magnet is. Oh goody, you are finally moving on to explaining what a magnet is, but if this part is anything to go by, I doubt you will. But. I look forward to what wisdom you share with us next time. But until then, I would like to take a moment to thank my patrons, who are Thomas Miller, Walter Bislin, Johnny Ragadoo, Kevin Deadman, Paul Schnulls, String of News One, MC Toon, Stan Zaystef, Cy Blacklock Hughes, Michelle Randall, Ugly German Truths, Kai Broking, and Steelman. Now, if you are a new patron and you are not on the list, then I am very sorry. This is actually me speaking to you from the past, as I recorded this in early December. I will try to remember to give you a shout out in the description. If you want to support me financially, then that would be greatly appreciated, as it will help me maintain this channel and support my beer and snacks whilst I'm writing up my thesis. But that was it from me. Thank you for watching, and until next time.